Let's discuss an interesting aspect of the Doppler effect. I'm going to give you two situations in which you might think you should get the same answer in both cases, but which in fact you do not. Situation number one will let the observer be moving and the source stationary. In situation number two, the observer is stationary and the source of the sound is moving towards the observer. In both cases, the relative speeds, they are moving towards each other, yet you will get different answers. So let's, let's draw the situation here. So here's a car, here's the observer in the car, and he's moving at some speed. In fact, let's give it a number. Let's call it 170 meters per second. And he's moving towards the sound tower, So here's the speaker, and it's going to be emitting sound waves. So that's situation one. In situation two, the car is not moving. But the, the sound, the source of the sound, is moving. So let's put it on some wheels here, and we better give it a rocket pack here. Okay, so it's moving. Interestingly enough, it's moving at the exact same speed that the car was moving at in situation one. So the relative velocities are the same, and one would think you would get the same Doppler shift. That is, the observer would hear the same frequency f naught. But what you'll see is that the observed frequency in situation one is not equal to the observed frequency in situation two. And there is a reason for that. And the reason is, in situation one, it's the observer that encounters additional wave fronts in his ear because he's moving towards the source. Whereas in situation two, down here, it's actually the source that is emitting shorter wavelengths because it's, it's in essence emitting a wavelength, emitting a sound front, and then catching up a little bit before it emits the next one. So they get crunched. Let's crank the numbers. So in situation one, we have the observer moving at 170 meters per second. Source is not moving. The emitted frequency, let's say that's 500 hertz, and we want to find the observed frequency. So we'll use our, our formula for the Doppler shift, which is the observed frequency equals the emitted frequency multiplied by 1 plus the observed speed over the speed of sound. And let's choose a speed of sound of 340 meters per second very slightly with temperature. For today's temperature, it'll be 340. Now, obviously, I chose the 170 here for a reason. That's because in this fraction, I get 170 meters per second for the numerator and 340 meters per second for the denominator. And therefore, this whole thing, this fraction right here, is a half. And plugging in, then we get the observed frequency equals 500 hertz multiplied by 1 plus a half, which is 1 and a half, and 1 and a half times 500 is 750 hertz. Very good. Let's now look at what we get for situation two. In situation two, the observer speed is zero. The speed of the source is 170 meters per second. And we'll, we'll stick, obviously, with the same frequency of 500 hertz and the speed of sound, 340 meters per second. So let's write out our Doppler formula for the situation where the source is moving. Well, the observed frequency is equal to the emitted frequency multiplied by 1 over 1 minus the speed of the source divided by the speed of sound. Whoops, didn't mean to put something, anything there. 
And let's plug in our numbers. We know that just like before, the fraction of the velocities will come out to a one half because it's 170. Well, I'll write it in here. This is 170, 340, both in meters per second. And so you get in the denominator 1 minus 0 0.5. By the way, I have the minus sign in the denominator because the source is moving towards the observer. Well, 1 minus 0 0.5, the denominator, that just equals 0 0.5. So we end up getting 500 hertz multiplied by 1 over 0 0.5. 1 divided by 0 0.5, well, that's just 2. So therefore, we get a final answer of 1,000 hertz. Very interesting. The speeds are the same, but the answers for the observed frequencies are much different.